Hey there, everyone. Welcome to today's Summer Sunday stream. It's Monday. It is literally Wednesday and we're filming this. But welcome to Sunday, Summer Sunday, Sunday, Summer Stream. We're so glad you're watching this. Happy 5th of July, the day after the 4th of July. We hope that you had fun and that you're safe. Nobody <laughs> exploded last night. You didn't night. lose some fingers. Yep. Or, yeah. I am Sam. I'm our middle school director. And this guy. I am Sam. And I. No. No. It's an not old, again. It's an old joke. It's fun it's, though. But only, only someone you know. So I'm Michael. Or I'm our high school director. Gee, I can't wait till I go to hike school. It's been a while since we hung out together, and we miss you. And guess what? We're gonna be hopefully hanging out with you sometime this month and next month. You didn't already hear the church is opening. July 12th, which is next Sunday. So we won't have Breakaway or Edge in the building, nope. um, but we have things that are being planned. So we actually haven't been together in four months. Four months. This is crazy. That so, is, some of them have probably like grown. Yes, probably some of you, you know, your voice has changed. You might be shaving like that one little hair on your face right there. Uh, Each razor has stainless steel blades. Or just let it grow. Just let it, let it grow, let it grow. Come on, Sam, be better than that. So, because it's the 5th of July, 4th of July weekend, we are gonna keep things short today. And for fun, here's something blowing up. I'm gonna show you a great way to play Piano Man. First, start with D, then D with C sharp in the bass, then B minor, then douse it with gasoline. Put a full can inside the piano, Duct tape a flare to your lawnmower. Start it up. And send it to the piano. Take 19 liters of Dr. Pepper, pour it into one of these uh, refillable water jugs. Take, I think, 40 Mentos. Pop them in. So in complete relation to explosions, um, talk about opinions a little bit. Opinions are everywhere. Everyone's got opinions. I mean, some of you really missed the pump and because you got the charge instead and it really bugs you that they did that little switch up. Some of you don't even care or don't even know what I'm talking about. Fortnite, Fortnite, what the point of building what you going night? We all got opinions, and some people like to give them, right? You know people that do. They like to give them, they give them loudly. Well done to you, and well done to you. I can't believe just how inconsistent you are. Do me a favor, get out! Some people like to be a little quiet, and they don't like to give their opinions. Do you know who my favorite chef is? No. You. Thank you. Regardless of whether or not you're an opinionated person, for us as believers, we have a responsibility to give our opinion humbly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last week we talked about the power of our words. Yes. Right. So we talked about how they can be used to hurt people or help people. We talked about our voices, obviously, right? Our voices speak, our silence speaks. And when we have opinions about people, it's really important that we filter them through kindness and through love. And so that's where we're going today. As followers of Christ, sometimes we might feel our words don't really matter as much, but the reality is that they do. Paul said this to a group of uh, believers when the, in the first church in a town called Galatia. Asia, he really actually he encouraged them to use their words to help other people. Uh, he said this, If another believer should be overcome by a sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. I love this verse because it does a couple things for us. It helps us know how to help others, but it also helps us know how to be helped. I love that it, the, the keys here are to be gentle and to be humble. I think most of us know what it's like to be helped when it when it feels helpful and when it is helpful, but also maybe sometimes when it's not so helpful. You're not helping! When, when it actually hurts our feelings or maybe we've tried to help someone and we've hurt someone's feelings because we haven't been or someone hasn't been humble and gentle. For me, I think of a time a couple months ago, I was kind of wrestling with this idea of unforgiveness in a relationship and I, I really didn't know if I was having unforgiveness and not forgiving someone or if it was just something that, that existed and if I, if, if I actually had forgiven them. And so I reached out to a friend who was close and I knew had had some experience with something similar. And 
I said, hey, like, does this sound like I'm withholding forgiveness from, from this person? And we talked about it. He referenced some scripture that it makes a lot of sense. They helped me and showed me some wisdom and uh, gave me some understanding that I didn't previously have. We ended up realizing that, hey, it was freeing for me because it didn't seem like I was withholding forgiveness. We had kind of decided like, hey, you've forgiven them. You're free. You're good. But I wouldn't have known that had I not reached out. Yeah. And yeah, I love that you had the maturity mm -hmm. to go and ask because I don't think I even do that very often to ask somebody else, hey, how am I doing with this? Like, sure. am, am I doing all right? Or if, do I need to change something or work on something? Yeah. So I have two illustrations for you. First one, if somebody comes to you and, and lets you know that you're doing something wrong or they call you out on something, I know like our first response sometimes is to get pretty defensive. Like, oh no, I'm not doing that or mm -hmm. I don't see it that way. Instead of just responding, think of it first and foremost like they're acting as a guardrail to you, mm -hmm. right? They see that here's the direction that your life is supposed to go you, yep. or that you could, your life could go in a positive way. And if, if you're taking and you're going the wrong way or you're running off the road, they're really just trying to help keep you on a good path, yep. right? So think of it that way. Don't be afraid. And actually, if, if you're a little confused by what they say, bring somebody in, like bring your parents in and be like, is this real? Are they just very opinionated or is right. there some truth to this? Another illustration for those of you who see somebody who's doing something wrong, whether or not like they're hurting somebody else or saying things that even are harmful to themselves or even to society, like think of it this way. It's like you're giving them a life preserver right? You're tossing it out to them, but you're going to be with them the entire time to bring it back in. You don't just come across and say, you're doing this wrong, blah, 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 blah. No, that's not helpful. That is a good point. That you're throwing a life preserver at them and knocking them in the head. Don't do that. The thing about a life preserver is like, once you've given it to somebody and you're trying to help them, you're going to stay with them yep. the entire time yeah. until they're back on the boat. Yep. That's awesome. I love that. Those are two really great pictures for us, for all of us to, to have in our heads when it comes to thinking about how to help others and how to be helped and receive help. I think of, I've been going to the playground a lot lately uh, with my daughter, Nora, and she's like small enough where she can like kind of fall off the playground. So I, I kind of keep my distance not too far away and I'm serving like I'm there as her guardrails. You know, I might be a little bit of helicopter, might be a little bit of helicopter, but I think it's, I think it's usually justified. She hasn't fallen yet. So <laughs> you can look at that one way or the other. To be there in a sense, I love that life preserver and the guardrail illustration to know, hey, I, I'm here for her, but I'm not, I'm not like in her face about it, right? I'm there if she needs me, which is exactly what you talk about with the life preserver and the guardrail. That's what those both exist for. Mm -hmm. And so those are our challenges for you guys this week. Challenge number one, find someone who you trust who could be a guardrail for you. Mm -hmm. If you're someone who feels like maybe there's an area that you need help in or need to get back on the right path, or even if you wanna find someone, because guess what, those times are gonna come. So it's good to have somebody who can be that for you when you need it. And then the other challenge is on the helping side. So find someone maybe who you can throw a life preserver to this week because there's everybody needs help. And like I said, at some point we need help, you need help. So if you can be that for someone else and they know that you're there, that is an awesome way to reflect the love of Jesus. All right, so enjoy your Sunday. Breakaway, there is no Zoom chat today. Don't forget next weekend, church starts, uh, starts up. So we yes. might see some of you there. But if we don't, stay tuned because we would love to see you at our Breakaway and our Edge events throughout the rest of summer. Yep. So have a Coming great up. day. We'll see ya. We always do this with our hands when we say it. I, uh, why did I pound my chest like Tarzan? <laughs> hey Sam. Me Sam. You student. You student. You listen on screen. Look like my mom on her iPad. <laughs> mom does That's that on awesome. her phone too. She hits it so hard. <laughs> I'm like, you know that doesn't, doesn't help. You can like judge how old someone is by the, like the decibel level of their swiping on their, <laughs> on their smartphone or on, like if I can hear you scrolling. It's not. Good job this to you. This is how we do it. <laughs> yeah.